So today we're going to answer a very important question. Are C9 actually good? Because they won the 10 Global Invitational. And with it, they won 15 million Korean won, which is like 11,000 US dollars, which might not sound like a lot, but for Cloud9, that's what they're hoping to spend this entire year. So that's quite a lot of money for Cloud9. And we're going to dive into this game, Cloud9 versus DRX here on Lotus, which Cloud9 managed to win 13-9. But just before we do that, first, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, Gosu Academy. And the Gosu Academy is one of the best ways to rank up in Valorant, as you can see on your screen here. But to me, the big thing about the Gosu Academy is the daily 10-man sessions that you can join, which will help you a lot. Because we all know ranked is a cesspit at the best of times. But in these daily 10 months, you'll be taken out of that environment and be put into one where people are actually calming. People are actually trying. People themselves are trying to get better on both sides. And so you're much more likely to be in an environment where you are going to actually learn where do you need to improve? What mistakes are you making? And then with the coaching sessions added on top of that, you will then very easily and very quickly become a much better player, realizing the areas that you need to improve upon to make you a better player and reach your ideal rank. And for anyone who signs up with my custom link in the description or in the pinned comment below, you will get a month for free of the Gosu Academy. So you have absolutely nothing to lose and potentially a lot of RR to gain. So thanks for Gosu Academy for sponsoring the video and let's get back to it. We're actually going to start off with round number two. Bit of a rough one for Cloud9. They won the pistol, but now here's the second round against just, you know, a couple of classics and sheriffs, but it doesn't go that well. Okay, so let's take a look at the first part of this round then. And you can see they've got this Viper Wall coming across, like, which is a bit of an interesting Viper Wall here from C to B, uh, which obviously means you can kind of sneak out this way. It could even threaten this. I'm not quite sure how that's interacting with the turret. And they're also going to put an Omen Smoke in here as well. Almost threatening, like, you know, we're being aggressive. We could be being aggressive everywhere, right? Almost disguising, like where they're going to be aggressive. You see that smoke coming out there. And Oxy actually gets ahead of this wall. I think maybe there's a bit of a slight miss here on the fade haunt. Maybe the smoke is kind of covering it up here from DRX, their own smoke. But the Viper Wall allows them to be that one way. Oxy gets, you know, out and gets this kill. And from this point, right, 5v4, you've got guns, they don't. Like, from this point on, this is like 98% chance of C9 win this round from this point. And really, I think the only way they maybe lose this round is overextend pushing out here. Right, where I never love being super aggressive against ecos, right? I always think make them do something when they're on an eco, right? Like they're not going to have a ton of util to, to hurt you. Uh, and so you probably just want to play choke points, really, if you are the defenders against ecos in general, I would say. Um, but C9, they decide to overextend and I guess it's it's an offseason tournament, right? Like, yeah, have some fun, whatever, right? But just it, do this now rather than VCT. But if they did do this at the VCT, I'd be thinking like, what are we doing? You know, because then these two, you might even think like those two had a chance there, right? Like from this point, like Jake and, and Zeppa, they have a chance to maybe retreat as well, realizing that there's a lot of people there. I understand kind of why they might not want to, because there is a gun, like a full rifle here down now. So they're kind of like, well, we don't want to give up that rifle, right? So they end up going for it as well. And like their util isn't bad, right? The flash hits, you kind of both flashes hit, but you know, now you've gone one for one again, and now you're in a 3v3, and now there's two guns on the ground. Yeah, you got the rifle, but you're still giving them guns, right? And you're going to see from this point on, it's going to get a bit messy and scrappy, but DRX are going to come to the C site. They're going to end up with a fatal tier after round two, which is kind of crazy as well. And it's going to be maybe a bit of a problem here for C9, and they end up losing this round. Hutogi Okay, 
Okay, next round here, round number seven, and Cloud9 are gonna go for a similar sort of idea, actually. But again, it's not gonna go great for them. 그래도 DRX는 계속 자네 지역에 저렇게 페인트 탄이 빠지고 이런 거 특히 페인트 탄이 빠지는 거를 역으로 활용할 수 있으면 좋을 것 같습니다. 네. 어, 또 절체적인 역의 상황 속에서 다리티 피해 방상 맞았어요? 자 오른쪽 아파요? 예. 뱀이빨 던져 놓고 이러면 바로 놓고 찍어 놓고 못 도망갑니다. 그리고 회전문 자, 뒤쪽으로 빠져 나가는. 오메리고요. 브라운드 라인. 자 버즈 역시나 회전문 통해서 한번 밖으로 나오면서 계속해서 상대 시선을 한번 끌어봅니다. 그러니까 지금 DRX. Okay, so let's break this down and let's talk about some details that I do like and don't like. The first detail that I really like is this raise nade. Uh, and you might be like, what the hell are you talking about, right? So they are trying to fake the aggression here again on A. And this raise nade is just so good, leaving your raise alone here on A. You throw a nade up here, you send this smoke in again. Your idea is we're going to get aggressive here. Sending this raise nade, this Viper will hear that nade and go, oh, well, the raise is probably with the pack. So, you know, these guys are probably up here with that nade, right? That's what normally happens when you throw this raise nade up here. So I love this idea if we're trying to, you know, then f like get some aggression going over towards C instead, right? I absolutely love that idea i think that's amazing uh because this viper is almost certain that you know your, your rays and probably omen maybe even sky are out there right but you're not there are parts of this though that i'm not too sure on, right so i love the initial like setup of it and we've got this viper wall now this viper wall sometimes these trap plays with a viper wall or some kind of wall and then you know we burst through it Sometimes those can run into problems of, you know, this is quite a big space and they could be back here and it's difficult to know how many people are there and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. It can be tricky to know, right? So that's like one part of it that's always going to be tricky with it. Stacks actually is running across here, so it does give them a little help, you know, a little hint that, hey, you know, there is someone here. The thing is that I'm not too sure on this, right, is that we're going to run through this wall, right? But it's just one sky flash. I'm just not sure that like one sky flash is enough when we don't, you know, truly know exactly where these guys are, right? We don't know how many people it is, all that kind of stuff. Just sending one sky flash to me, like that's not enough. And you're going to see that Vanity almost like tries in this kind of like second layer here. He, he gets snake by almost at the worst time, right? Where, you know, and then we kind of send out a, a flash and, a, and, a, and an Oma flash and all that. But the surprise is gone, right? DRX now know that you're there and they managed to get this first kill, right? So... I'm just not quite sure if, if that one flash is enough because, you know, by the time we're sending out all of our other util, well, DRX are also sending in a ton of util, right? So I'm just not sure, quite sure. And then the second part of this is this door opening, right? Which causes a massive problem for Cloud9 because anytime this door's open, now obviously these guys are getting pinched upon. So you have to leave, right? You can't stay. You, ha you simply have to leave. This door opening is like, well, that's over, right? This plan is done, cooked, go, right? And so again, this is maybe something Cloud9 needs to think about where... Whether it's this turret being across here or whether it's Whippy, like, always constantly making sure that no one can cross here. This door, you know, kind of can't open uh, if you want this trap play to kind of work. Because if someone is at this door this fast whilst you're running it, you know, you are going to be in a lot of trouble. And you're going to see that these guys kind of have to leave here. So that's something for Cloud9 to think about as well. Just, you know, if they are going to go for this. Interestingly enough, after this round, they took a timeout. They kind of abandoned this wall, went back to kind of the normal wall that goes across A instead. Uh, and, you know, and just, you know, just did a wall like this instead and kind of played it more normally over towards C here. So... You know, maybe they kind of gave up, gave up on this idea after that and they can go back to the drawing board, but that's just a couple things to think about. And now from this point on in the round, DRX are actually going to group up and go back towards uh, the B site and uh, they are going to manage to convert this round. You all know, but now it's not the moment of being right now. Yes. It's the moment of being right now. Yes. We had to do that once in a while, but we had to do that once in a while. DRX is very concerned about Lotus. He got hit and hit and hit. 윗킥의 촉발이 빗나갔습니다. 본인의 위치까지 찍혔고요. 이런 비사이트에 설치할 타이밍을 줄 수밖에 없는 클라우드 나인. 자 이거 그냥 밀고 들어오는 거 맞습니다. 좋아요. 버즈가 도개할 키를. 독살 구덩이 있어서 열었는데. 굳히기 구덩이라서 사실 예. 버즈 정도는 끊겨도 이제 상관이 없는 상황. 시가, uh, but now let's come to the part where Cloud9 dominated this game, which was their attack side, and we'll start actually with their bonus round. Mm -hmm. 
근데 이러면은 옥시가 폭발팩이 다 빠진 상황이라 걸어서 가야 되는데 과연 드론 하나 믿고서는 갈 용기가 있을지 시나인? 어, 예. 플라시백이 보고 있거든요. 그래서 살짝 접어요. 문 다시 열고. 어. 지금 만약에 시나인 선수들이 두 명인 거를 삐, 두 명인 걸 확인했다면 안갈 이유가 없습니다. 지금 시적으로. 네. 다시 문 돌리는 게 나을 것 같고요. 클라우드 나인. 본인들의 타이밍 다 뺏기고 있습니다. 폭발 팩 하나라도 있으면 옥시가 힘으로 열어볼 텐데 자 이번 독성 연기 꺼질 때갈 생각입니다 지금인가요? 지금이죠 옥시 먼저 걸어서. 들어왔어요 플래시 백의 차이 많이 없는 상황에서 바로 앞에 바로 앞에 아, 멀어서 볼수 없었고요 와 이것까지 옥시 저기 바꾸고 독성 연기 열려서 날려서 옥시의 3킬 아 옥시 와 옥시의 재파괴 지금 C9의 에임이 아니 옥시 선수 에임도 에임인데 브레이킹 확실한데요? 예. 굉장히 훌륭한 피스커를 보여주면서 이걸 교전으로 이겨냈습니다 구덩이 그냥 내려갔고요 내려버리고 맞고 하나 맞고 둘 체력 나쁘지 않아서 좋아요 근데 예. 이겨야 돼요 d r 습니다 여기서 만족할 수 없습니다 그래서 각 하나하나 지워내면서 뒤쪽 하지만 여기까지 Okay, so let's break down this round, which is a weird round. This is a very bizarre round, because they almost start off with this B fake, and I don't quite know if this is how it was meant to go for them, right? You see, they put up both smokes, they blast back in here with the rays, they take this ult orb, they don't even destroy the alarm bar, though, which is a big problem, right? So they can't even get past this alarm bar, and I'm not sure if it was meant to be like, hey, we're going to fast fake this, and then maybe... It seems like taking the door if you wanted to go like, you know, fast fake this in here. It seems like that would be like the more logical way, but they actually just go back. And so it, it's a bit of a weird one here where, you know, I can't quite figure out the exact like, you know, is this how it's meant to be run or were they meant to come in to the door, right? And then try and pressure C because they make it pretty obvious that, you know, we're at C, right? The Killjoy sees them early on uh, out here and then, you know, they put down this orb and they're going to be putting down snake bites and then... You know, they're, they're going to make it pretty clear that that's where they are. And in fact, we even get a Prowler out here and, you know, they start to walk up. Now, the timing of them put opening this door from Cloud9 is amazing, right? And pushing Foxy back from there because that could have been a big, like, lose potential. And they just stay here, right? And then they almost go for what I'll call attempt, like, number two of trying to take the C site. They get rid of this Narrow Swarm, but they send in a dog. They send in the nade. They don't manage to get onto the site, right? So now they're just, like, sitting here again. But that orb and you again, like... Double controller is becoming meta, uh, you know, has become the meta, you know, this past year. And it's because you can, especially Viper, right? You can just continually create pressure, right? The, they almost tried like twice to get onto the site. It didn't work. But this Viper can just keep putting up stuff like this, right? And it just allows you to walk in onto the site. And it's just so good. And the flash here from Zephyr is going to be amazing, as we see. And Oxy's timing is pretty good with it as well. And what this orb also allows later on is for, obviously, as these guys come up this way, right? It allows other people, you can see them come kind of down here. It allows other people to come in this way, right? Which makes it a problem for Stacks that he's kind of then surrounded. And you'll see that Zephyr actually ends up running through a smoke as well and finds the fourth kill of this round, right? So Stacks ends up like in the face of multiple people and then you've got Zephyr out here who's you know way ahead of maybe where you think he might be because of that as well and so you end up in a big problem 1v4 for Mako and as we saw he doesn't quite manage to win it out although I'm not quite sure exactly what uh, Vanity's doing yet I don't mind dropping the ult I think that makes sense in a 4v1 but then not quite, maybe he's trying to get a gun because he has a judge I guess maybe don't quite know uh, Zephyr then tries to swing doesn't get it but eventually they do convert it as we see <laughs> And then finally, let's come to round number 20, which is, I think, a really nice round by Cloud9 overall. And uh, we need to talk about Omen in this round quite a bit. ドクターストレンジャーのドクターストレンジャーのドクターストレンジャーのドクターストレンジャーのドクターストレンジャーのドクターストレンジャーのドクターストレンジャーのドクターストレンジャーのドクターストレンジャーのドクターストレンジャー
Okay, so let's break this round down then and it starts with some DRX aggression towards A, right? They throw out the nade just there, they're gonna send in this omen flash just here, right? TP up top, you know, all normal stuff. They take control of A, they get macro set up here. He starts doing one ways, all normal stuff. Cloud9 in response, you know, they back out of it and uh, they're actually gonna come and throw an omen smoke here on C. Now, this is the first part we have to talk about with omen uh, because this omen smoke on C that they just did over here, this is uh, something that Fnatic do a lot with their Astra. The thing is though, Astra smokes are bigger than Omen smokes and we see it on the broadcast here just in a second uh, that uh, you can just kind of, there's a gap, right? There's a gap here, right? So it doesn't quite work. You could see that, you know, if they were to cross here, we know if they're crossing there or not because of this gap, right? So this is like, again, just one thing for like Omen versus Astro or if this was like a Viper Orb as well, you know, those are bigger. There isn't a gap here, whereas with the Omen, there is a gap. So that's just kind of like one little problem that this smoke kind of doesn't fully work. Uh, now, the second thing we need to talk about is they see uh, stacks getting a bit aggressive there. And uh, what we're going to see in a second is uh, this Omen one way on A, which I, I, I just don't, like this is another thing right like this omen one way like in theory is amazing right like wow what what a one way right you take early control of this you put this one way here they can't get through it wow you know what the problem is with this one way almost everyone in this map plays viper and almost every team puts a viper wall that goes either this way like cloud nine are doing right now or one that goes you know kind of this way right you know what the problem is when this wall goes up can't see this one way it doesn't work right particularly from the angles that you're normally going to be playing from you know as this omen right uh and you see it right here vanity puts up that wall he puts it down nice one way right and this could be the whole team and so that's just part of, of like the problem right with this one way it doesn't quite work however we're about to see a lot of omen value because they get this kill in here we get the pop of the ult look at this flash from jake from downtown the prediction they're, they're oh, unbelievable. Fully blind. Whippy. Free kill. Unbelievable flash. From miles away from Jake. Absolute miles away. And then for the rest of this round, I like the way that, that they play this round as well, right? They pop this door just here. They pop the Seekers as well. So Seekers are going to come out in just a second. They pop this door. You see this guy here, you know, who's just got this kill. Pop this door. Instantly, you see this Viper starts rotating. Instead, they're going to come back towards A with the Seekers as well, I think is a big part of this because you don't quite know where this Omen would have been otherwise. But with the Seekers, it's really nice. And uh, Cloud9 are going to manage to convert this round. You can see the Seeker just going out here and it's going to find Mako. Cloud9 are going to win this round. They would then go on to win the game and this whole tournament. And uh, yeah, Cloud9, probably better than most people expect. <laughs> Spray